Protectors of the Suna Suna Baba Protectors of the Suna Ina Alaham Dudi La Wasala Wasalam Allah Wa Rasulallah. Welcome to another session of our Hadith class. And we are studying the Hadiths taken from the book entitled The Prophetic Parables of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this book is compiled by Sheikh Muhammad Saeed Atli. And what he did was he went through the sitta and cho had ch chose authentic Hadiths in which the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used parables, parables to help uh, break down the meaning of things to us. And let's put the uh, PowerPoint up on the screen uh, for today's session. And uh, hold on, let me open it up. Inshallah, you probably should be able to see it in a minute. Okay, and again, there's the link to the website where you can order this book and all the other books www.atleonline.com this book the par the prophetic parables you know this book is only five dollars the book that i'll be teaching next week beginning next week on the life of the prophet muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasalam is ten dollars please pick up your copy of the book today and uh, today's hadith has to do with the parable of being stingy or miserly. Uh, and whenever you hear the word miserly, a person that is miserly, this is a stingy person, a selfish person, a person that is greedy, a person that doesn't want to give or help others. Well, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said the similitude of a miserly man and a man that gives in charity is that of two people who are both wearing coats of mail. And this is a picture of a coat of mail. We don't have coats of mail today, but back in the prophet's days, this is what the men would wear when they go on the battlefield because it was supposed to help protect them, you know, from the sword, uh, from the stab wounds and swords. This is a coat of mail. So here the prophet is saying, when you compare a stingy person with a person that gives in charity, it's like having two people with coats of mail on. For the person that gives in charity, that coat of mail will expand over him so much that it covers his whole body, even his footprint. Even though the coat of mail is tight, it will expand over a person who gives in charity to the point where you can't even see his footsteps. But on the other hand, and when it comes to a stingy, miserly man, when that man tries to give in charity, that coat of mail will, will, will constrict over him. His hands will become tied up to his collarbone. He can't move, he can't bend, he can't stretch. And the reason being is because he doesn't want to give. That's the parable that the prophet is using. A man who does give in charity, he gives openly, he opens up himself, he opens up his money, he opens up his wealth and gives from his heart so freely. But a stingy person, if you have to, if you force them to give, they don't want to. So they're tight wadded. It's constricted. It's like something that's keeping them from doing that. So you don't want to be the tight wadded, stingy man. You want to be the person who is generous when it comes to giving and helping others. Also, guys, I want everyone listening to understand that charity doesn't just take the form of money. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taught us that any good deed that we do is an act of charity. There's a lot of miserly, stingy people out there 
who don't want to help do anything. If you ask them, can you help me take the garbage out? No, they don't want to do that. They'll tell you no. Can you help me cross the street? No. Can you help me pick up a piece of paper? No. All they care about are themselves. They're selfish. They're greedy. You don't want to be a person like that. Whereas a generous person is always willing to help a person in need. The generous person always puts others before himself. Subhana Allah. So you don't want to be a stingy person. You want to get in a habit of helping others for the sake of Allah because you know that this is something that Allah loves. Allah loves generosity. That's why he is generous. Allah loves mercy. That's why he is merciful. And giving for the sake of Allah, whenever we give and do for the sake of Allah, it makes us better people. It protects us. And it will cause Allah to send more blessings upon you. So this is a wonderful hadith to ponder. You don't want to be the miserly man who is so constricted in a coat of mail. He can't move because he doesn't want to give you anything. He wants to hold on to what he has. You want to be that loose man that's so generous that it just flows from within. Okay, now that I've explained this, Hadith, how does it impact you in your life? Anyone would like to share? Go ahead, Sister Fresno. You know, just thinking on this, Layla, that's what them people out there think that Muslims is easy. They some uh, they give you they draws and all of that. Well, I'm not gonna give you mine. You better go buy you some. You better go. Uh, getting that great feel in cotton feel. Don't try to play me. You know what I'm saying? I will help you, but I ain't got to do nothing but die. You feel me? So I ain't the one. I am not the one. Yeah, and that's another hadith too that we're going to discuss probably next week. Whereas Islam is all about balance. Whereas Allah emphasizes how we should be generous. Allah also emphasizes to us, don't be a fool. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught us who to give to and who not to. For example, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said the needy person is not that man who constantly keeps begging you for a handout. The needy person is that man over there who you see working two or three jobs to try to take care of his family because he's too proud to ask for help. So we're supposed to be generous, but at the same time, we're supposed to have common sense too and not squander our money, not give our money to people who are number one, not in need, people who may take it and buy drugs with it. We're not supposed to support the evil or none of that. So it's gonna take wisdom. We have to learn. The prophet taught us how to hold and when to fold. He taught us who to give to and who not to. That woman outside on the street that's begging you for a dime. And then I got a sister here at the mall saying, can I have help, you know, paying my rent? Who's my money going to? My money's going to the sister who needs help with her rent. I'm sorry, the lady on the street, uh, you can door dash. You know how much door dashers make? God, they make good money. You can make about $1,000 a day door dash. Get up off your behind and go get a J-O-B. Okay, so again, be generous. Help those who are in need, El Miskeen. And El Miskeen is not the man that's begging. El Miskeen is the one that's too proud to ask for a handout. So he door dashes, he Instacarts. He flips burgers at Mickey D's. Okay, go ahead, Sister Precious. Yes, this hadith reminds me of like some parents that I know who are like really selfish and stingy when it comes to, you know, their finances and their time with their kids. When they're younger, you know, they spend most of their money and their time out with other people, especially when their kids are younger and then growing into that teenage year. And then when they grow up, you know, you want your kids to act a certain way, but they all become so disrespectful to you. 
They don't listen to you. They don't want to hear what you got to say. They don't care about you. And, you know, it just reminds me of like some parents that I know that have a lot of children that grew up and that are, you know, teenagers and adults now, and they don't have no respect for their parents at all. And their parents, all their parents want to do now that the kids are older is guide them. But it's like, where were you when they were growing up? You know, so it just reminds me of that financial, financial wise and time wise. Exactly, guys. That, that's the, the fate of man. That uh, Allah has a whole chapter in the Quran about time, how we're always at a loss with time. We don't take advantage of our youth. We don't we, we wait to the last minute or it's too late to do things that we should have done. You know, and that's a good point that she made. You know, you're going to wait to now you want to guide your kids. But when they were younger, you weren't there for them or you didn't do it. Something to think about. Yes, go ahead, Sister Sahara. Um, yeah, like so Sister Precious, how she brought that up. It also reminds me of, you know, um, people who are kind of greedy with their knowledge and not sharing the knowledge of Islam, especially if you know something and you um, want to guide someone instead of keeping that to yourself, try to share it. I try to do that as much as I can with my siblings and my cousins and stuff and my relatives and sometimes even people I don't know. And I don't want to be greedy. I want to give them information that's useful to them. Um, and it's like if they want to take it, they can. But I'm only doing my part. Exactly, guys. You know, Allah says in the Quran to save your family. Save your soul and your family from the hellfire. Instead of doing all that dow out in the street to a bunch of Christians who ain't interested in Islam, but they're interested in trying to convert you and they're succeeding at rapid paces. Instead of out there wasting your time arguing with a bunch of Kafirs, you should be sharing your knowledge, if you really got any, with your siblings or with your family, your cousins, your families. Save your soul and your family from the hellfire. Leave these Christians alone. Allah makes Muslims, not you, not me. Okay, yes, go ahead, Sister uh, Latifa. Yeah, th this is a good hadith, and everything that everybody has said really just makes me think of many different things. But the one thing that I thought about with this is that you do have to find a balance with this. You know, it, it takes a lot. You know, I one of my nafs is working on, you know, being stingy. I'm not a very given person but when i'm in the right situation i do give but it's never it's always like if somebody say oh i need you for this i'm like oh lord something happened and i'm not what do i have to do you know and i have to remind myself it's for the pleasure of allah i got to keep saying that so this hadith remind me of finding that balance because i had i know a person that was they were always kind of tight and stingy but then they really got hurt and really needed money and then i had to really talk myself into okay you know they're really a need now and they are family so for the pleasure of Allah go ahead and do this thing so like I said you got to really be careful and make sure that you're not looking at somebody say I'm not going to do anything because of their past or whatever you got to yeah. really look hard at that yeah that's a hard thing to do to to not hold a grudge I have to catch myself with that too my granddaughter you know she's very very selfish she's young I'm trying to teach her OK, she's young and, and, and can learn. But, you know, you know, you, you, no one likes to have things thrown up in your face. You know, you ask a person to go to the grocery store with you. Oh, no, no, no. You know, remember that time I did this? Remember that time? And it turns you off. It'll turn you off to the point where you don't want to be bothered with that person. Whereas that you don't want to help that person. You don't want to give that person nothing. And like the Tifa say, you have to find the balance and not hold a grudge. That's the thing, grudging. It's so simple for us as human beings to begrudge another person. Because our personal gen remembers everything. And he whispers all that to us. Oh, don't help him. He's a miser. She's a stingy. Remember, she throws, she's gonna throw it up in your face. She go, you know, and all this. And you know, so we have to learn to strike the balance, you know, to do and, and the way to do that, like the Tifa say, is to do it for the sake of Allah. What are your intentions? Are you doing it to make that person like you? Or are you doing it because you want Allah to like you? If we do everything for the sake of Allah, then we don't have to worry about, you know, begrudging people and all of that. Good point on that, Sister Latifa. Yes, go ahead, Sister Melion. Um, what I got from this hadith is just like being like generous um when it comes to like obeying Allah. Um, 
and giving Allah his right. Um, the first example that came to my head, it was like earlier today, I had to go to this event and it was like a space filled with like all non-Muslims. But I think the one thing that had me going was, you know, Allah blessed me with this nice outfit. I mean, it's his right to see me like beautify myself in this outfit, even though I don't like attention at all, or I don't like being looked at because I have social anxiety. I just, you know, I kind of like threw an outfit on and it honestly worked in my favor. And it was just so, you know, it was beautiful. And, you know, I spent that time just like remembering a lot and I had like the best day ever and I got some nice pictures out of it. So I was very happy. You know, I did the right thing um, in regards to like obeying the law, but I was very like, I wasn't hasty with my decisions. I took my time to like pick the outfits out and I also like, you know, socialize with other people, something I normally don't do, you know, treating human, you know, talking to other human beings and giving them their time, but also giving a lost time on my way there and coming back home. Mashallah, what a wonderful thing to share with us. And again, you know, this is an example of a person that, you know, we, that knows their strengths and weaknesses. We always talk about how as Muslims, we have to know our strengths and know our weaknesses. A lot of us suffer with social anxiety. That's why most of us hang out on the computer, including me. People that hang out on the computer are people that are more recluse. You know, people who hang out on the computer are people who like to be, don't like, who are not comfortable around people. You know, I do dawah so well on the computer, but in real life, I'd probably, you know. So, you know, she knows her weakness. And so she's trying to overcome it. And how does she overcome that weakness? By putting a law first and foremost, by saying, I'm going to, I know a law wants me to change. A law wants me to become a better person. So I'm going to show my gratitude to a law for the blessings he's given me <clears throat> by wearing the wonderful clothing. And then I'm going to go and spend time with my brothers and sisters in Islam <clears throat> because, again, this is something that Allah loves. And the fact that she did it for the sake of Allah, that propelled her forward to get through her day and overcome her weakness and earn Allah's pleasure. What a wonderful experience, Sister Malion. Anyone else would like to share? Go ahead. What do you want to share, Karen? Did y'all hear my cat? Like you, what do you have to say? Okay. <laughs> okay. Yes, okay. I guess that's everyone here for tonight. A wonderful hadith for us to ponder. Let me put it back up on the screen so the other sisters can see uh, who are asking me for it. Here it is, the late joiners. Uh, oh, okay, hold on, hold on. Let me put it here so y'all can see. Okay, oh, I'm sorry. I thought I opened it up for y'all. Here it is. Uh, inshallah, you can see now. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the similitude of a stingy man and one who gives in charity is like two people with coats of mail over them. When the giver of charity intends to give, it, that coat of mail will expand so much so that even his footprints cannot be seen. But on the other hand, when the stingy man intends to give in charity, it will constrict over him to the point where his hands become tied up to his collarbone and every ring is fixed up to one another. So again, you don't want to be the miserly man. You want to be like the, the, the generous man that, you know, opens yourself up and gives generously from your heart for the sake of Allah. You don't want to be that stingy person that people have to beg for help and then when you do a uh, give you hate it so much that you walk away with no reward from it and that's another thing too guys when we do things with, with without the sincerity it's not accepted so you gave me ten dollars because i asked for it but you didn't want to give it to me you hate it giving it to me guess what you just threw away ten dollars you didn't get no blessings for it in order for our good deeds to be accepted, they must be number one, done, performed with sincerity of intentions. And number two, they have to be performed the way Allah legislated. So I want to thank everybody for joining and participating in this session. 
I want to remind everyone to please be here tomorrow at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for the uh, special the class with Dr. Asim. We will also have Sheikh Morsi here. It's going to be a special lecture on grief, you know, on dealing with uh, um, grief and signs of a good ending and things like that. Very special lecture I think everyone here can benefit from. So I want to thank everyone for joining and participating. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika. Asharu an la ilaha ila anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayhi.